Jay, do you share Rory's vision for a potential world tour for the top 80 or so players that sits kind of above the traditional PGA Tour? Well, that's, you know, that concept, along with a number of other concepts, have been discussed um, at the policy board, including Rory's time on the policy board. And, you know, part of, part of the, part of the uh, dynamic of being commissioner of the PGA Tour is balancing the perspectives of you know, not only our entire membership, but perspectives of our board members. And it's indisputable that this is a global sport. It's, you know, and it's, um, we have over the years moved to more international markets. I think the, the co-sanctioning that we did um, with the Genesis Scottish Open and the success we've had there um, there are more opportunities on a go-forward basis. Balancing that within, you know, the realities of, of our business and our commercial model and thinking about that longer term is something that, you know, we will continue to do as a board. In fact, it's something that we talked about at our most recent board meeting. I understand the signature events are aspirational, um, but there have been players that have voiced some interesting opinions saying that the field should be larger, the field should be, some say it should be smaller, there should be cuts in all the signature events, no cuts. Um, are, are you currently satisfied with the model of the signature events that we have on tour? I'm never satisfied with anything, um, but I, I would, it's, it's early days. We're 10 days into this season. And again, going back to going back to the structure of this organization, you're gonna get a lot of different opinions about what players wanna see. We got a lot of those same opinions last year. Uh, and we got, you know, we got, and those are opinions that we took into account as we developed the system that we're in with signature and full field events. And you know, we've had, you know, for, for all the criticism, you know, if you get criticism, you also have players. I mean, I'm walking in the parking lot today and Brian Harmon pulls up in his truck and he says he needs to speak to me. And we walk up towards the clubhouse and he said, you know, I, I meant to reach out to you last week. He said, these signature events are awesome. You know, everything about the competition and the infrastructure and putting us in a position where we can play at the highest level. It's just, it's, I feel a great sense of accomplishment when I'm at these events. And, you know, when you, when you look at what we were trying to accomplish, which I talked about up front, if you have, you know, 49 players outside the top 50 that have competed, you know, the retention rate, the fact that as it projects now, you have 30, 20 players that will not be in the top 50 next year. Um, you know, and you continue to see players who are playing in these full field events come forward and now be in a position to, you know, achieve and excel at a, at a very high level. I think as you watch this continue to develop over the course of the year, um, those are all things that I think are very, very positive, particularly as you get into um, the reality of the fact that our playoffs are now 70, 50, 30, and our schedule, uh, our schedule itself is 31 weeks with three three weeks in the playoffs. And so, you know, if you go back in time, and I think it's important to, to make this point, you know, if you think about what fans have been saying to us and what you, questions that I go back, I think through my head over the ver various interactions I've had with the media, your season is too long. It never ends. Why are you, why are you competing in the FedEx Cup playoffs uh, up against the start of college football in the NFL. Uh, why are you, why do you have such a confusing format at the tour championship? Why are you not doing more to dimensionalize your, your, your players and your stars? Why are you not showing more golf shots? And, you know, you think about where we are now with the move that we've made to play here in March, PGA Championship in May, three FedEx Cup playoff events, that's made it even more competitive out here. Uh, we, we, the fall itself, where players are now playing for their cards and playing for positioning. 
that's made that even more, the fall even more competitive and consequential. Again, it's early days. But if you then look at Netflix, and it's important for everyone to realize that when we pursued the conversations with Netflix in 2019, the PGA Tour took the lead with the major championships to convince us as an industry to move forward to do this because we recognized that this was a great way to showcase our athletes. Obviously, the pan pandemic, um, you know, caused a little bit of a lag there, but you know, that that element to what we're doing, coupled with the investment that we're making in Pro Shop, the fact that when PASPA was repealed. Um, in 2018, we were at the forefront moving forward to thoughtfully introduce gaming into, into our sport. So the building that we're building out here and what flexibility that provides to storytell and showcase our stars, um, to looking at the DP World Tour Alliance, to now having transitioning our business to not only a C6, but a for-profit entity that allows us to, to invest back into our product, into our fan. I'm not, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a really long way of saying that we are gonna continue to do all the things that we need to do to grow and expand our fan base. And we've done that in the absence of that capital. We now have that capital and a determination to create real value for this organization as a for-profit company. I think that's a positive thing for fans. Um, and so going back to your question on signature events and full field events, I, I, I think it's, you know, let, let's, let's continue to have this conversation, but you've got great champions as we sit here 10 weeks into it. Um, and we've also had the reality is we've had a little bit of an anomaly with three of our seven events being significantly impacted by weather. Um, and then when you look at where we are year to date, you have six players last year at this point had one that were in top 20 in the official world golf ranking. This year we have two. Last year you had zero players outside the top 100 in the official world golf ranking that had one. This year we have four. The median OWGR for a winner at this point last year was 16, this year it's at 67. The positive to that is new players and new stars are emerging. Um, but the reason I say it's early days is there've been some factors that I think have, have limited our ability to fully see the value of, of, of these signature events.